Hello everyone, you are welcome back to Soya Arena Academy. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click on the like button and the subscribe button to subscribe to my, to my video and also like the video. Now, this video is done for some set of engineering students who require um, understanding of strength of material. So, I will be giving this video in form of a series. For those of you that don't understand, please try to follow up with the series and I'll make sure that what each of the series is well explained with examples with each topic that is found in strength of material. Thank you. Today, we'll be starting with a tin cylinder. The first thing that we need to understand is what is a tin cylinder? I will not waste most of my time on all these videos. Now, what is a tin cylinder? A tin cylinder is a cylinder that can be used to store fluid. Now, we have uh, various examples of this cylinder. Like for example, now, we have like your vacuum cleaner is an example of a cylinder, but the cylinder that will be assumed to be a tin cylinder must have the following things. But let me say it must have this thing. That's when we can say that, okay, this cylinder is assumed as a tin cylinder. The first thing that you need to know is that what for any tin cylinder, the thickness of the cylinder compared to the diameter must be less. That means the thickness of the cylinder must be less than the diameter of the cylinder. That is number one. Number two, the cylinder must be subjected to uniformly distributed what stress. That means the stress in the what in the in the cylinder will be assumed to be uniformly distributed. That is that for what a thin cylinder. Now, in a thin cylinder, what would you what do you need to understand in that? A thin cylinder can always be in form of a cylinder like this. I have this cylinder here, whereby it is subjected to what stresses. Now, let me try to write it out in what in a two D manner. Now, if we put a fluid inside this cylinder, let me say this cylinder consists of what fluid. As well to know that fluid will always exert pressure in any container or let me say in any cylinder that they found themselves. Now, this fluid will tend to exert an internal pressure on this cylinder, whereby the internal pressure will be all around the body of the cylinder, like this. Now, as well to know that what, whenever there is a pressure in a cylinder that is acting at an area, then that pressure will generate a force because you know that the force acting on the body is always equal to pressure multiplied by the what area. Pre pressure multiplied by the what area. It simply shows that what this pressure here will generate a force on the body altogether. Now, coming back to strength of material, we know that what when there is a force that is acting, the force can either act along because if we check the forces that is acting here. The forces is acting along two direction. The first thing is that it is acting along the longitudinal direction and it's also acting along the perpendicular, which is the transverse direction. These two forces will tend to shear this cylinder into two. But you see, the one that is going along this direction here will tend to shear the cylinder along these what section parts. Why the one that is going vertically upward, that means both vertical forces, or the, the upward and the downward force, we tend to share the cylinder along this axis here. Now, whenever there is a force in a material, that force will generate a stress in that material, because you know that the stress is always equal to force all over area. So this force here will generate a stress. But for any thin cylinder, the, amount, the kind of stress that will be generated there will be of what two types two types of stress will be generated in it inside a tin cylinder the first stress is what we call the circumferential stress circumferential stress the second stress is what we call the longitudinal stress longitudinal stress now, what differentiates these two types of stress here? According to, as the names imply, circumferential stress is a stress that is acting along the circumference of the material. Now, where is the circumference of the material? This is simply the circumference of the material. Now, a stress that is acting 
vertically along the material is what we call circumferential stress. Another name given to this stress is known as hoop stress. Hoop stress. That is the name given to this long um, to this circumferential stress. Now, the function of this hoop stress or circumferential stress is to divide the material along this axis. Let me say we have something like this. It's going to cause this kind of division in the material to occur. Please don't mind my words. Right? Now, we can also have this here, which will have something of this kind in this material. Now, whereby we have what's this. Now, this is what we call a circumferential stress, whereby it will tend to share this material along this axis, whereby the stress will be dividing material along this axis like this. Now, this is along the circumference of the material. It should divide it into what? Two along the circumference of the material. Now, this is circumferential stress. But when we talk about a, a, a longitudinal stress, longitudinal stress is a stress that only acts along the longitudinal axis of the material. Now, where is the longitudinal axis of the material? We can have the stress to take place. Like, let me say you have a cylinder here. I have under one here. You know, this is it here. If the cylinder tends to divide to cut like this, whereby I can easily put this into two here, whereby one will be here, this is one stress, and I have another one that will be here. This kind of cutting in the material is what we call a longitudinal stress. The stress that is here is known as what? Longitudinal stress. Now, let's now take a look at what? Each of these stress, the formula for each of these stress, one by one, and what does this stress tend to do? Now, let's take a look at this. Now, you see, for the hoop stress, the hoop stress in the material, let's take it as stress one, is always taken as the pressure of the fluid that is formed in that cylinder multiplied by the diameter of the internal diameter of the cylinder all over two multiplied by the thickness of the cylinder. Why the longitudinal stress is taken as stress two, which is taking as the pressure of the cylinder multiplied by the internal diameter all over. 4 multiplied by t. Now, not something that these two stress are always tensile stress. These two stress are always tensile stress. They are both tensile stress. And another thing I wanted to know that what tensile stress are positive stress. And I wanted to know that what these two stress are also known as a principal principal stress. They are known as principal stress now these are the two stresses that act in the material now, how do we use how do we apply this thing to solve that is one thing that we need to understand in this place here now now take each of these condition now notes 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 that if the thickness of the cylinder to be determined if the thickness of the cylinder is to be determined then the hoop stress formula must be used please take note of this if you have to find the thickness of the cylinder thickness of the cylinder if that is what we are looking for then we must apply the formula for hoop stress to find the thickness that hoop stress is equals to the pressure times diameter all over 2 times t we can only use this to find what the thickness of the cylinder and that's number the first note the second thing that you need to note about this thing about applying using this formula is that if the maximum permissible stress in the material is given all together when we said maximum permissible stress or we can take it as allowable stress that is the stress that the that's the that's the maximum amount of stress that the material can take before it's it was undergo failure all together that's what we call maximum permissible stress now we can know that it is known as what maximum allowable stress now please note something that what the maximum allowable stress must be lesser than so the maximum allowable stress must be less than the hoop stress altogether. Now, it simply shows that what if the maximum allowable stress is not given to us, then we can, sorry, I'm so sorry, the hoop stress should be lesser than the maximum allowable stress in that material. Please note, for failure not to occur, because the maximum allowable stress is just talking about the stress that the material itself can undergo. So if the hoop stress 
is greater than the maximum allowable stress, then the material, which is the cylinder, will surely fail. So to avoid this failure, the maximum allowable stress must be less than maximum allowable stress must be less than the hoop stress. Now, if you are not if you are not given maximum allowable stress in a question, now you assume that the maximum allowable stress assumption that the maximum allowable stress is equal to the hoop stress. So whenever you are given maximum allowable stress in a formula, know that it is known as a what you take it as your hoop stress for calculation. That is second. That's number two. Now, the third thing I want you to note about this thing before we start applying the formula to solve is that the unit of the pressure and the stress, which is the principal stress, is that means hoop stress and the longitudinal stress must be the same. It can either be in Newton per millimeter square or it should be in Newton per meter square. Note that. Please take note about this. Now, another thing I want you to know is that the units of the thickness and the diameter must also be the same. It can either be in meter or together. Now, majorly, they must all be this. Are we together like that? So, I think I've been able to brief the topic itself and what it's all about. Now, let's now take a look at how can we apply each of these formula in calculation Please stay with me to the next video. In the next episode of this video, I will be showing you different examples on this and how do we apply the formula for solving different problems on thin cylinder. All together, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel.